Favi, Salsa, Viral, Movie. I'm in this bitch with the Wooski. Ball in the summer like truly. Champagne got me loopy. Glizzy by looking groovy. All the demons looking moody. All the. Ay, ay, ay. What's happening, y'all? I hope you're having a beautiful day. If you did not know, that was my rendition. I bet y'all can't wait till I get music so I stop singing and butchering stuff. <laughs> Shout out Benny the Butcher. Shout out Buffalo Upstate. But I bet y'all can't wait till I can actually play music. <laughs> But anyway, that was Demons by uh, Drake, 5 e 4 and his Sosa Geek off that newly certified Platinum Dark Lane demo tape, or Dark Lane's demo tape. Uh, I'm not too sh- I don't even know the name of the, the album or the mixtape, but it just went Platinum. I just saw that on my Instagram in this past day or so, which is crazy because I've been playing the bleep out of some of those records on there. Uh demons war pain those are some there's a lot of really good records on there but those are the three that uh stick out to me i really like those records um so check that out if you haven't the record just went platinum the album so or the mixtape so check that out if you want but yeah you are now tuned in to the bobby keith podcast what's happening i hope you're having a beautiful day i think i've told you that already but i'm gonna say it again take that take that take that take that this is episode nine, Nueve, week nine of doing this. How cool is that? Nine weeks strong. And it happens to be November 9th. It's a little baby synchronicity, nothing crazy. Y'all going to get this on the 10th. But episode nine, the Andre Iguodala episode. How great of a player is Andre? It's one of my favorite players of all time. I'm not sure why, but I think it has to do with him being in Philly when I was a child. You know what I'm saying? Um getting drafted there i didn't live in philly at the time but um we would go down there a lot because all of our family is down there uh, when i was a kid and stuff so i just had this attachment to philly born in that area but anyway so he was there in the dunk contest and the other ai you know what i mean just following his whole journey i had a sixes ai jersey iguodala jersey i had a uh Nuggets Iguodala jersey. I actually got to see him play in Boston, and I think it was like a at least a overtime game, if not double or triple overtime. It was an incredible game, and um, got this. I think he actually got injured in that game, so I didn't really get to see him play. But it was a really good game, regardless. Um, I miss going to basketball games, man. I haven't, I hadn't even done that in the the recent past, um, just because. Tickets are expensive up here for uh, Boston Celtics. That's the closest arena. Um, They're just expensive up here. So I haven't really been to a game since that one, I think. And that was in, let's see, maybe 2013. Well, I mean, when was AI on the, I keep saying AI, y'all going to think. When was uh when was Andre on the Nuggets? That was probably 2013. That was a long time ago. Um, But yeah, COVID or not, I can't wait to get back to a basketball game whenever I uh, can buy a ticket, you know what I'm saying, when it's not breaking my bank to buy a ticket. But, yeah, the the Andre Iguodala episode, I always, outside of just, like, kind of following his career and being a fan from early, um, I mean, how good was he with the Warriors? That's kind of how everybody knows him. Finals MVP with the Warriors, like, put some respect there. He played good in the finals with the Heat again, and... I don't know what he's going to do this year, but I think I feel like he's just going to take that role again of just being that really, really crucial vet that a team needs. Uh, he might stay with the Heat. I'm not sure. Who knows? Uh, he might retire. I really don't know. I haven't been too tapped in, but I remember uh, <laughs> one of my proudest Twitter moments back when I had like a, an active Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I was following his page and he said something like, uh, the fry the fries or something and that day yay just went on a rant about uh mcdonald's or, or i don't know but i responded to uh <laughs> andre or i quote tweeted andre and i was like uh the, the, that's like the poison i you know i don't even remember but he was like he responded to me and said you smart and that, that was just a big moment for me you know what i mean and that's kind of the the uh the benefit of having people be accessible is when they reach 
back out to the community and say something like you smart and i was just like damn that was that was a big boost for me that that day or that month or probably for a long time i mean i still carry it to this day it's just it's cool hearing someone you kind of idolize respond to you even just on twitter but yeah i think it had something to do with uh me just calling um mcdonald's serving up poison essentially and trying to give us cancer and all that all that good stuff that you get into when you start getting into this health stuff on a super level but anyway yeah shout out to andre Guadala, man i hope i have his book in my car i haven't finished it but i like to read some pages from time to time when i'm in a parking lot you know what i'm saying and i got nothing else to do <laughs> not that it's my last thing i want to do but visual reading is not my strong suit i'll do the audio book over it <laughs> but i got the physical and we're just gonna support andre Gudala without uh without any questions over here you feel me so word word to ai this is episode number nine the andre Gudala episode what's going on with y'all this is an incredible week weather wise and obviously we'll get to the news or whatever you want to call it in a little bit but yo I'm in southern New Hampshire. I say it every episode, but it was snowing maybe nine days ago. Where it's at nine. Um, and there, it was snowing. And we had just escaped to Long Island or whatever. And we came back up and there was still a little snow here and there. But a couple days ago, for some reason, out of nowhere, the temperature just popped up to 70. Out of nowhere. Whoop, 70. And we just been living in bliss these past few days. Like... Yo, when I tell you I was adjusted, I was straight up adjusted for winter. I was ready. You know, you see you see that first snow and you, you your mind just go, all right, here we go. Tuck them shorts away. Them toes ain't going to see the light of day for a while. You feel me? So I'm a Birkenstock fella. You know what I'm saying? I keep them toes out. You feel me? So I was just ready for winter. And then all of a sudden we get this good weather and I just, it's... Whew, I'm just spending as much time outside as I can, you know, doing my meditations outside again because it was all rainy and snowy and cold and I just wasn't really able to do them outside. Now I'm back outside and uh, the hikes, I don't, I'm not wearing uh, jackets. I'm, I'm back in shorts and a t-shirt, just enjoying, enjoying my time outside with nature. And like, for example, this morning I went up and did a little hike, um, the same one that I talked about last week where I almost got seriously injured uh, going down. And I hope the 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 community out here, um, my little my little uh, condo community, <laughs> the 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 grass is getting mowed for some reason um, right now. And I hope y'all I hope that isn't diminishing the audio quality that I'm producing here, but. Regardless, thank y'all for staying tuned in or tuning out, whatever you're going to do. I love y'all. Sending some peace, love, and positivity to you. But yes, I was doing the same the same hike that I was talking about last week. I was doing it this morning, and I just did it again um, Saturday. It was a beautiful day, but it was so busy. There were so many people. So I just kind of got in, got out, did my thing. You know what I'm saying? And I ended up doing that longer version that I talked about last week. But none of this matters except for what I'm trying to talk about for today. So today, this morning I got up, made my way over there to the mountain and I started going up and I got up to the top and I just, all of a sudden the sun was just directly on me and I just sat down for my meditation. I just, I just, just sat there with the sun and it was just so powerful, it was so spiritual, it was so moving and just like connecting with this thing that kind of powers this whole solar system that we kind of exist in as uh, humans or aliens or other, whatever you want to call yourself, word to Pharrell, I am other. Um, It's just, it's very, 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 very enjoyable, powerful, and moving to kind of connect with the sun this morning. And it just, I kind of want everybody to experience it. You don't got to climb a mountain to do it. I just... I don't know. I like I like climbing a mountain, sneaking off to a little area on the side where nobody's at and just sitting and kind of meditating and appreciating the sun and appreciating life and just being one, one with Gaia, one with our little planet here and just, you know, try to spread some love to everybody. And 
I hope y'all are getting some of it. But yeah, I did, this morning, man, I was just, whew, I, I couldn't, I couldn't even leave. I needed to get up and come back home and do the podcast. But I was just sitting up there, just being one with the sun. You feel me? And it just felt so good. And I can't wait to wrap up this uh this episode and go back outside before the sun sets i think we got like one more day of really good weather and i think that's tomorrow and that's the day that this comes out so if y'all are listening to this right now uh on the day it comes out maybe press play or press pause if you can and press play later but press pause and go 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 appreciate the sun and the warmth while we still have it for this random bit of November that we're getting it blessed with some beautiful warmth and sun. And I just want y'all to experience that if you can and just kind of be conscious of it, you know, kind of kind of really thank the sun and really appreciate the warmth and love. It's, it's just beautiful. I mean, it makes the whole solar system here work. So, I mean, it's it does a lot. And I think it kind of does it thankful, thanklessly, you know what I mean? Um the sun don't be asking for thank yous and you know what I'm saying so I don't know I just send some thank yous and some gratefuls up to the sun and you get some really cool warmth (laughs) back and this probably sounds crazy to some of y'all some of y'all y'all know exactly what I'm talking about and I love both of y'all whoever (laughs) whatever side you're listening on but anyway yeah it's been really cool i mean it's kind of lame leading with the weather but it's a real point because my body was ready for winter and i think that the the wind i mean we all know about seasonal seasonal depression sad seasonal i I think the abbreviation is sad but i'm not sure what the abbreviation stands for um so i don't want to really mess it up but i mean you know as the seasons change into winter and stuff, a lot of people catch that depression bug and I feel it. I really get it. And I think I kind of put this together recently. I think the time change has something to do with it too. What is daylight savings time? Like what? Y'all know my, my thoughts on time. It's just an illusion. This is just some created control system to kind of, yeah, y'all don't need to hear all this, but if you've ever been in a moment that seems like it takes you to another place or maybe at last an unquantifiable amount of time, but maybe it was only a couple seconds or a couple minutes, but it felt like it was years. You just kind of know that this time thing, it don't really exist. It's kind of an illusion. But anyway, under our system that we live here, time kind of controls everything. It's kind of the, the thing, the heartbeat of the society maybe would be a good way to play it, say it. It's the fourth dimension is time. That's kind of the divider between the third and fifth dimension and again if y'all think i'm crazy i might be bitch i might be shit um but i think that the the daylight savings time thing just adds to the seasonal depression you know what i'm saying because all of a sudden it goes from a gradual uh change of sunset like in the the peak the longest day of the year is like nine and then it was like it it works its way down to like 6 30 and then all of a sudden fall back an hour now the sun is setting at like five like what (laughs) it's dark at five now and it just it changes like a light switch um and You know, word to Drake, I'm upset. (laughs) That makes me upset, a little sad. If you don't catch it, it might kind of control you. And I kind of thought about it, and I'm like, wow, I'm not going to let that control me. So I kind of popped out of that. But, you know, just be careful out there. The the darkness is upon us at, like, 5 p.m. these days. It's crazy. So, you know, do stay healthy. Do your meditation. um, Do what you got to do, your exercise and stay positive out there you know what i mean because there's some stuff out of our control like the sun is now it's now dark at five (laughs) what is that that's crazy (laughs) where's all my people in alaska or like uh norway or antarctica all those places that it's like uh like dark for months like damn how y'all living that's crazy that's crazy Y'all must have a special connection with the moon, you feel me? And I had a little moment with the moon on my hike also. I had, that's crazy now I think about it. I had a moment, a moment, 
that that's what's up i like that i'm coining that you feel me movement moon man it's tough even to say but i had a i had a moment with the moon uh because you know how the moon be out at like at, at like noon and it just be there but it don't really be saying nothing but it just be there and then when you notice it it's kind of got like a vignette on it or maybe a so you, you know what i'm trying to say and then you notice it and it's just like oh what's good yeah i'm out in the middle of the day i'm always here but you just never notice me <laughs> you feel me and word to the moon for keeping some some bright at night you know what i'm saying and all the stars and the whole universe and this beautiful system we exist in but i'm not sure it was where i came from with that but here's where we're going <laughs> We're going with by dawn. You feel me? Y'all saw those lawn signs? Those were clever as hell. Cause that's kind of really what it boils down to. We got Biden getting the president. I'm I'm a USA citizen. You feel me? So, um, I went and did my voting last week. Got I voted for Biden. You feel me? Not not cause it's my favorite person in the world or my favorite politician, but because we trying to say bye, Donald. You feel me? So bye, see ya. Get out of here. And, and another thing, <laughs> we don't claim you as far as orange people goes, <laughs> cause you know me over here as a, as a ginger, as a fully certified ginger. You know what I'm saying? Um. It like a hundred percent, a hundred percent ginger. Like uh, my eyes are even blue. You feel me? The blue eyed gingers. Do some research on them. We like uh, we the last of a dying breed. But <laughs> um, man, we don't claim we don't claim the orange man. You know what I'm saying? He he do he be doing some other stuff. That is not a that is not an orange. That's not a ginger. You feel me? He, that that is some weird stuff. I'm not sure. Not sure what that is. We call that fake over here. You know what I'm saying? That's that's a fake person. But um, <laughs> my point is, I'm glad to see that that a uh, Trump fella out. Get out of here, skedaddle. This has been a weird four years. Um, nobody wanted this. Well, I mean, I think I guess some people did because he got voted in. But uh, glad it's over and. I wish I wish it was my man Bernie. Um, you know, like Smino said, who you voting for? Bernie Blunt. What are you asking questions for? We going for Bernie, you know. Uh, but it seems as though the powers that be ain't really rocking with a man like that. They ain't let him shine. They ain't let him have the mic. You know what I'm saying? Can't even get the dude in the debate. Like, let, let's at least get him. Let's at least get him to the podium. Let's let's have him be the uh, the nominee. You know what I'm saying? Or they just don't let it fly like that. They don't let it rock like that. And if y'all know, you can't even you can't you can't even be at the uh, at the debates as a third party. So it's not like he could just dip and make his own thing and come back super strong. You need like five percent of the vote to be a third party in the previous election. For the it's a whole fucked up system. And it ha- another thing that had me thinking about the electoral college. <laughs> Like why? What? What are we doing with that? I'm sure there's great reasoning. You know, I'm not a poli sci uh, fella. I don't really know what's going on with all that. I kind of think it's a. I mean, yes, we have control of voting in a lot of local people and doing that, and I I, I actually took part in that this year. You know, because it, it affects us locally. So I did my research on the local candidates and uh, did my thing. You feel me? But. I think at the top, this is kind of a puppet show, you know what I'm saying? Um, Word to Absol, uh, (laughs) when Trump won in 16, he was like, now that Trump is POTUS, I know this whole election is just another puppet show. That ain't none of my business, though. Um, Yeah, so, I don't know, but where was I going with that? Oh, the Electoral College. I'm not really sure what it is or why. It, clearly, it didn't It didn't hold on me like physics did as when we got taught it in school, um, which is weird, right? Uh, like, we, we get taught this, but it didn't really stick. So it's like, is it that? Anyway, anyway, I'm rambling. What I'm trying to say is the Electoral College is kind of like if a basketball game, instead of, like, the, the person, the team with the most points at the end of the game instead of that the game is decided by whatever team had more second chance turnovers in the second quarter 
and whatever team had less rebounds in the third quarter. And if either one of those doesn't decide it, then it's whatever team had more layups in the first two minutes of the first quarter. You know what I'm trying to say? It's it's it do, it just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense. Like, okay, in 16, Hillary had more votes. She didn't win. Uh, you know, a little before my time, but in 2000, that was a whole controversy with uh, Bush and Gore. That was a whole thing. That was a big controversy. Um, so it just seems like something. We, like, why are we going by this this electoral college thing? Why why aren't we just going by who had the most points? Or, is it, or it's kind of like uh, <laughs> instead of a basketball game being decided by what team scored more, it was like whatever team had the oldest combined age, <laughs> that team was. Like, it's just, it's something that isn't even, it's just, it's, just, it's off. It's weird. It's weird. It's weird. I'm not... Not I, I I don't really as you can see I don't really have this metaphor formed but I was thinking it's kind of like if a basketball game wasn't decided by the total score <laughs> and it's just wild it's wild like that but um yeah I'm glad to see Trump out of there you know what I'm saying uh that's beautiful it's good um like I I posted this thing a meme that Todd uh, showed me that was like uh. When you order Coke, and it was a picture of Bernie and Tulsi, but the waiter says they only got Pepsi, and it was a picture of uh, Biden and Harris, and I was just like, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> we got handed some Diet Pepsi here, but we'll take what we can take. So, yeah, you know, uh, we got Biden, and oh, yeah, so the meme, I posted the meme and I had a bunch of traction on the meme, which felt, which was cool because a lot of people related to that. Like, yeah, we we really wanted Bernie, uh, but I guess we'll take Biden. And we would have rather had Tulsi, but I guess we'll take uh, Harris. You know what I'm saying? Um, but yeah, so we had, uh, oh, so one person responded like, yeah, I feel that. But it was like, uh, it, it just, at least now there's kind of a calming sense that maybe everything will be okay or back to normalcy and uh yeah i feel that i feel that it's kind of like what was it called it's called the the hail halgian hagelian dialectic um when like a some the a power at b creates a problem right so maybe we could say in this scenario and if y'all don't want to follow me or y'all want sure go for it but let's say in this scenario the powers at b say all right trump trumpito it's your turn it's your turn trump and all of us down here, we say, nah, that's crazy. Besides the people that actually did do that, um, which are out there. Um, but yeah, we're like, nah, 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 nah. Uh, so the popular vote said Hillary wins, but whatever. And the, Trump gets in place, right? So powers that be create a problem. Then the powers that be offer a solution to the problem that they created. <laughs> and this is kind of like healthcare. It's uh the medical industry the healthcare industry in the states it's it's really more we'll create a problem and give you this pill so healthcare wasn't the right word it's kind of the whole industry you know what i'm saying it's uh not solution oriented it's uh bandage oriented or you know what i'm trying to say but anyway um yeah so the powers that be offer a solution here's biden and now we could still do our weird stuff and and you're going to be okay with it because it's not as bad as what it once was which would have been Trump um and i don't know i could that could be crazy that could be conspiracy or whatever but it seems like that's kind of how this system is operated it's like well let's create this problem so we can create this solution that the people are going to be happier about than this problem i don't know that's kind of maybe how I see it, but you know, I, I, I'm a person, if I have to support a politician, it'd be someone like Bernie, you know what I mean? Um, just kind of progressive and actually well thought out and wanting a lot of stuff. And he's been about it, about it his whole life. There's no weird blemishes. Like there's no 86, uh, 1986, uh, drug bill. 
uh, you know, Biden with the 100 to 1 on the crack to cocaine. If y'all don't know about that, where you been? Get out of your little get out of your little hole but you know Biden with that and the 94 crime bill you know the three strikes and you're out situation and you know Harris has his time as attorney and doing all the shady stuff it's like like I've said in the past if we look for the bad stuff it's there but I don't know I haven't really found too much about Bernie the one the one thing I saw uh y'all know Dick Gregory I, I was watching one thing where he was like uh, Bernie Dirty too, you know, Ben and Jerry's is greasing his palms <laughs> and rest in peace, Dick Gregory. But <laughs> I thought that was funny because it's like if that's the only thing we can find on Bernie's that Ben and Jerry's is <laughs> funding him, then uh, that's not really a bad thing. Ben and Jerry's is doing some really cool stuff and y'all know that. But um, anyway, and that's another thing. People always find a bad thing. So I saw something uh, somewhat Someone posted something negative about Ben and Jerry's, and it's, it's just kind of human nature, I guess. But uh, yeah, you know, I would I would have rather have Bernie up here doing something crazy. But you know, again, there's a there's a calmness that Biden's here doing his thing. Um, he it brings some normalcy back, brings some uh, some common sense, some hopefully compassion and love, and hopefully we reverse some of the crazy stuff that's been put in place um and hopefully this gives a chance for biden and uh harris to kind of like maybe write some of the things that they had done in the past and kind of uh put a put a different positive thing on it like maybe uh all drug offenders get to get that expunged from the record or get released from jail or any any like petty stuff like that or i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes but um, you know what i'm trying to say like you, you saw oregon and what they did um decriminalizing everything so i don't know maybe maybe they can do something like that and the, the, what i'm i guess i'm just trying to say uh, it's not over just because they're in office like now they're on the clock uh, and y'all better do some good stuff because we've seen what you've done in the past and it's so, so, and that's kind of why it's more by Don than Biden. You know, you know what I'm trying to say? The lawn sign. I thought that was just such a clever lawn sign. It's by Don as opposed to Biden. Um, cause the way I, the way I see that sign is, you know, I don't really rock with dude that heavy, but I definitely don't rock with the other dude, so I guess I'd rather say bye, Don, than Biden. <laughs> oh, shout out to anybody who's still tuned in to me here. Um, you know what I, I was thinking? I was thinking because uh, I was driving around today. You know, I went and did a little hike. Everybody's taking down their their little their little lawn signs, and um, for some reason, at least where I am, it seems like everybody's lawn sign is Trump, and it's funny because. Uh, Biden got New Hampshire and like early too so it's like all we see is Trump stuff and people are buying billboards for Trump and it's crazy and we're me and Tall were talking about it and I, I think it's like well people are just fans of this dude and then he decided to run for office and then he decided to make his base you know the poor whites and um, poor white <laughs> it, it, that's just a you can't really be a poor white everything uh maybe financially un may, no uh no money whites <laughs> you know what i'm trying to say because there's no uh pity to be had upon anyway <laughs> you know he made his base that and then he brought out white supremacists and he was like he really fucked with them and he he just did all this bullshit so essentially all these people that had nothing to grab onto are now like even bigger fans of this dude because they were already fans of him because he was a reality tv star you know what i'm saying um and he was just kind of always out there but so people are like fans of the dude which is the scary part <laughs> and that's why the signs were everywhere because they were like they were like because you know I'll, I'll walk around in a in a uh, a t-shirt of an artist i like as like a yeah, I'm a fan. I love this dude. And um, essentially, I think that's what people were trying to do. But 
<laughs> what I'm trying to say is all the signs are coming down now and <laughs> people are taking all the signs that are left. The only signs that are left are the Trump ones. Like all the local stuff is gone and some of the people who had Trump stuff, they put their stuff away, but there's still some people who are holding out like, well, you hear the accent I give them? <laughs> well then, the vote's not over. I don't know why that's the accent I give them, but I just, I guess that's what I internally think they sound like maybe um but <laughs> so their signs are coming down and some people are replacing them with patriot signs like new england patriots like the football team some people are replacing them with little the 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 blue lives matter if i you know the people will just they'll do they'll just kind of continue on with their lives but still do some weird stuff i don't know that's kind of just one uh, I think I think they're still out there and they're still gonna be incised by the the uh, the Donald fella. Um, but the moral of the story is those that chapter can finally be closed. And I don't. I'm not really buying into the the. It might be insanity. Um, like on the way out, I I hope that it's just like hand the powers over and then just continue on with life and hopefully Biden and Harris can make some change. But, you know, I'm not, I'm a little optimistic, but I'm not hyper optimistic because, you know, like I said a hundred times already, I wanted Bernie. Bernie would have been, that. that's the, that's the vibe, you know, that's the vibration. And it pains me that I have to do all this uh, pick a side stuff because it's like I don't really want to be hateful or have to choose, be forced to choose um, the lesser of two things I don't want to choose. Um, and it's like the one that's the worst thing in the world, I would never choose it. And then one's like, it's not great. It's kind of like, eh. So it's like, all right, I guess I'll choose it. But, you know, you know, on those... uh those surveys it's like highly satisfied okay and extremely dissatisfied so it's like trump's like the worst option and then biden and harris is like eh, okay and then bernie would have been like the yes i'm extremely excited to uh vote for bernie you know what i'm saying but that's about the depth of my political knowledge. <laughs> and don't take any political advice from me because I don't know nothing. I'm a college dropout. What's good? <laughs> but I do appreciate y'all tuning in. I love y'all so much. And I guess we could pivot into uh, maybe some uh, some music and television and entertainment type stuff. Um, like I said at the beginning, I've been playing that Dark Lane demo tape. For some reason, I just been playing it a lot, and I think, I think I, uh, I underrate Drake, and I don't know why, cause the music is incredible. But at a certain point in time, it was kind of like, it was kind of cool to be like a Drake, like just say like, yeah, I like Drake, I love his music, but I don't super rock with it. You know what I'm saying? If you know, you know. But um, I don't know when that happened. I think that was after. Uh, Maybe after, if you're reading this, it's too late or after the future and the diamond, 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 diamonds on me dance. After that album, maybe when I think whenever more life came out, because that was like, he, I mean, he even said it, it was like a playlist as opposed to like a legit album. And after that kind of came out, I was always like, yeah, it's good, but I'm not like going back to it because um, I don't know. There's always better stuff out, in my opinion. Um, and then scorpion came out and i kind of just i listened to it through maybe twice maybe and i just kind of wrote it off because i don't know i was just there was other stuff i could listen to um and i, I was just in a real complete project type mode and this past this past a uh, few weeks i think ever since i listened to that 40 interview um since I listened to that interview, it was kind of like, oh, what am I, what am I doing? Why am I, uh, why, why am I doing this? Why not? Let me, let me go re-listen to Scorpion because that's, I know there's a bunch of great songs on there, but why am I treating it like it's not great? 
so sure enough i go back and listen to it this past few weeks and it's great it's super great um if i did i made a video on youtube like best albums 2018 and i didn't put it on there and i would now um i definitely would I, it would be it would excuse me it would be up there for sure uh i don't know if it tops like noir i don't know if it tops victory lab i don't think it does um those are some of the top projects of that year but it's up there it's a really good project uh and i've been listening to that dark lane demo tape too i mean there's some really really good songs on there I, for some reason that demon song that's all i can listen to it's so good it's so good uh, but yeah i've been listening to a lot of drake um and i've been listening to a lot of shuffle like always love me some shuffle and on a completely unrelated note I really want to talk about Zevia. Are y'all familiar with this? This is this sounds like an advertisement. Just plopped right in. <laughs> but Zevia is incredible. I don't know about y'all, but I'm like a... Uh, at a young age, I was always like into like soda and like fizzy drinks. You know how some people just like can't drink fizzy drinks? Uh, well, wh- whatever gene that is, I don't have that. Because I've been drinking fizzies and sodas and stuff like that my whole life basically. And... I definitely was addicted to it. That's not even a question. It's super duper addicted to like soda and stuff. Um, and once I did the whole veganism and health focused flip of my life, um, I kind of got rid of soda completely. And besides like uh, like some like natural type sodas and stuff. And you know what I'm trying to say? Um, you know, the stuff you can get at Whole Foods, <laughs> that type of stuff. Uh but then I came across Zevia, which is also at Whole Foods, but it's I think it's at a lot of places too. And that's like, it's essentially like sparkling water, but it's flavored with stevia. So it's like Zevia, stevia. And it is like, I have no other way to say it. It's fucking phenomenal. It is so good. I'm addicted to this stuff, but there's like nothing in it. So it's, it's fine to be addicted. Fine. I'm sure there's something, uh, some sort of thing that could hurt you long term, but... Yo, y'all gotta try this stuff. If you if y'all like soda and stuff, or maybe you stop drinking soda because you know it's so unhealthy, or maybe you just drink it once in a while, try some Zevia and you are gonna feel so much better about yourself. <laughs> and that's it. That's all I wanna say. It's just a free little advertisement for Zevia because I love them. It is so good. Try the grape, try the black cherry. They're they're just really good. <laughs> and that might be even all I have on that, but it just trust me trust me on that one i don't think if the is there much other music stuff i want to talk about uh not much I, like i said i just been listening to drake and oh rest in peace king vaughn man i had just uh just 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 recently um because of joe Budden podcast they played a song um it was him and fabio i think i'm pretty sure uh, I could be wrong, but they played a song of his on the podcast and I saw his album came out. So I played a couple songs and then a few days later transitioned to the to the other side, man. Um, it's sad. It's super sad. It's just you hate to see anybody go. But right when he's bubbling, like just bubbling, man, like. And I'm sure this project now is just going to put him in another stratosphere because he's in another atmosphere, another dimension right now. But, man, it's just sad to see. It says, I hate that I have to do it again. Like last week, I mean, even though Pop Smoke was a while ago this year, but um, I talked about it last week. And now this week, it's, man, rest in peace, rest in power, King Vaughn, man. That's, it's sad. It's really sad. 26, I think. So he was right in my age group, right in my age bracket um yeah more life more power more more love to all of his family members and again like i said last week i hope there's no weird record label stuff so his family could eat off of the young man's art and be able to be okay for a long time um it's just sad you know and uh i have no other i I have no other way to gracefully transition out of this but yeah man it sucks keep your thoughts uh positive y'all um and send some love to his family 
I swear that cough wasn't COVID. But yeah, let's get into some entertainment type stuff. Um, I told you all a couple weeks ago I was going to watch Emily in Paris. And Tal and I just finished the show up. It's really good. It was like one season. And it, I don't know. It's a good, uh, it's a good just kind of watch show. You know what I mean? It's neither here nor there. There's no like revolutionary stuff um, besides like you can learn more about French culture than maybe you get on uh, a week trip over there, which is kind of what we did. So, you know, in a week, you can only learn so much about the culture. So it's kind of more learning of the culture in there but outside of that it's uh it's just a good show um it's uh, in the fashion world a lot which i kind of try to live in and they they played they poked the they poked the streetwear bear um and it was just i thought it was a good show i <laughs> i really enjoyed it the first season so um excited to see if another season comes of that um also my favorite genre in the entire world is travel shows. And uh, they got one called Somebody Feed Phil, which is kind of like a Bourdain version. They go to a lot of restaurants and it follows the Bourdain script is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, I think that's my favorite show in the entire world. And I hope one day to be able to do that. And that's kind of what I do with my YouTube channel. At least what I want to do is be able to travel and just show y'all the trip and experiences and show y'all the experiences that uh and the learning that i gain of wherever i go and show you the food and you know that's my dream job boarding that's always been my favorite thing um all of his shows on every single network they were they were on all three of them i believe from food network to travel to cnn um it's just my favorite show always and I was always watching it and I was just always fascinated to see other parts of the world and see them through his lens and all the beautiful um monologues he would give to the b-roll it's it's just inspiring and damn there's a lot of loss in this episode huh um yeah man that was a that was a tough one for me you know um was Bourdain when he transitioned and that's kind of, that's where I want to, that's my, uh, maybe my favorite or most inspiring roadmap um, is Bourdain's. That's, that's the dream. The dream is to have a, some sort of travel entertainment where I can just kind of take it all along with me. Um, and I can do that as a career. And I think, I, I mean, I'm building it. I'm laying down the stones every day. Um whether it be with this podcast or with YouTube or anything. Um, you know, I just, I love that. But yeah, Somebody Feed Phil had another season come out. Um, and I really don't care who, like what version, what Bourdain knockoff is out there. I'm watching it because I just love travel shows. It's my favorite thing. Um, and there were some good episodes in there. Um, I recommend that for sure. He's He's got an interesting personality, but once you get a hang of it... Uh, it's a, it's a great show after that because, I mean, you just really focus on the travel and the the chefs and everything. And even as a vegan, um, and that's kind of my twist, you know what I'm saying? Anybody out there who ends up making that show before me, hopefully I'll be able to do it before anybody. But if someone does it before me, um, that's kind of the twist I want to take on the Bourdain model. And I've been doing it on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? But I want to do it kind of at a, at a big scale. Um, and kind of have the vegan version of Bourdain. <laughs> and yeah, so even as a vegan, I, I'm able to enjoy uh, talking to chefs as they're like cutting like uh, a steak or whatever, whatever. That doesn't really bother me because um, uh, it's not my, it's not what I'm doing. It's uh, someone else is doing it. Um, and that's kind of how I am with veganism in general. It's like, this is my choice. I, I would do what you want. <laughs> I again I ain't got no gavel I ain't trying to fight nobody's battle um where to have soul but yeah that was a good that was a good little season uh on Netflix and I, I think y'all should check that out if you're into the travel style shows um uh, is there anything else? you know what I've been watching there's this there's this show uh it's like a British show it's called I want to say Grand Designs maybe but essentially what it is is like it's like a very uh, 
grand scale show you know what i mean like the episode might start in 2010 and finish in like 2016 it's and what it is it's someone like buys a plot of land or buys uh like a a building and it's the whole journey from idea to completed building or incomplete building or failure and i don't know it's super interesting as someone who also would like to create some sort of beautiful uh domicile at some point in my life and have some beautiful interesting contemporary architecture um it's a fascinating show and it kind of shows the little details that you might not even ever think about like uh maybe you started one part of the project that shouldn't have started then and your connection to the power is now messed up and it's like a twenty thousand dollar mistake and like just seeing that stuff it's just it's it's really interesting i recommend that show for sure and outside of that we've been dabbling uh as always in broad city and i think that's maybe the funniest show ever and we just threw on a couple episodes of that the other day and it was really fun really funny and i don't know if i have my my throat is getting dry um i need some water i've been talking a lot and i think i think that's all i got for this week y'all i'm gonna i'm gonna head outside and enjoy this weather while i can And I hope you all have a beautiful day. And I really, like, I can't even stress this enough. Thank you all again for all the support. And everybody that tunes in everybody every week and everybody that maybe it's your first time listening. I love you all. Thank you all so much for the support and continued uh, admiration and words of kindness. And damn, thank you all. Reflecting it right back to you. I'm a mirror. You know what I'm saying? I love you all. I hope you have a beautiful rest of your day. Peace.